Ooh, it's October. You know what that means. Columbus Day! And apparently it's also the month where people watch a lot of horror movies and dress up in costume. I wouldn't know anything about that. I never dress in costume or watch horror movies. Believe it or not, one of the biggest requests I get involving Halloween-themed films isn't any movie from the Halloween franchise, but it's this 1986 hard rock-themed horror flick called Trick or Treat, not to be confused with the one with no O in the title. It's the story of a teenage metalhead who is bullied in school and gets a little help from the ghost of his dead rocker hero via a haunted record. It's also the story of what Skippy from Family Ties was doing while not hanging out with the Keatons. That's right, the movie stars Mark Price, best known as Skippy it's also the directorial debut of character actor Charles Martin Smith of American Graffiti and The Untouchables. But most importantly, you can now say that you're watching an 80s horror film from the director of Air Bud and Dolphin Tail. Seriously. And since it's often requested to me, I'm sure it's really good. Really, really fucking good. It's the 1986 De Laurentiis film that's no blue velvet, but is at least better than King Kong Lives. Let's get this rock party started! Go, bear these tidings to great Lucifer. Say Faustus doth surrender up his soul. Ugh, I already have to listen to scripture in the Pure Flix movies. I don't need it in the 80s horror flicks, too. The hardest part of this movie will be resisting the urge to reference Rockets Your Decision. We start out by showing posters of bands and performers who aren't the person singing. And just what the hell is playing? Mark Price plays Eddie Weinbauer, and being a metalhead in this movie means that you wear a really shitty wig. He looks like one of the kids who got his dick chewed off in teeth. And I'm not sure, but I think his only friend is the BTK killer. He also doesn't fare well with bullies who mess up his hair, even though he worked on it all day and they touch it. These bullies have nothing better to do than to harass the metal kid and strip him down naked. Then he grows up to become Dwayne Johnson and partners with Kevin Hart. It'll do really well, but will be instantly forgotten. But at least he has his music. I mean, I've got thoughts in my head that nobody but you would understand. The one thing that holds me together is you. You. You did it, man. Ah, damn, he's gonna fuck that poster of Michael Hutchins. His rock hero is Sammy Kerr, played by the late Tony Fields. Sammy's act apparently consists of biting snakes in half, dousing himself in blood, and sexually harassing a microphone. But what does his music sound like? Hmm. Didn't expect that. But tragedy soon strikes for Sammy's one fan. Again, rock star Sammy Kerr Victim of a hotel fire, dead at age 38. The fire started when Drexel the Dream Hemsley's plane crashed into it. Eddie is really upset. Now he's forced to settle on new music from Damn Yankees. So he tears down all his posters and replaces them with Barry Manilow, who is scientifically proven to live forever. But he'll never forget this on point music. Tearing down posters, not walls. But really, who pays attention to the lyrics anyway? Eddie mourns with local DJ Nuke, played by Gene Simmons, who at one point used to be Hank Williams Jr., I guess. But Nuke has a little surprise for Eddie. I got something for you. Know what this is? It's the last record. That's right, Lou Christie's final record, truly amazing falsetto. 
Oh, oh, we were talking about Sammy Kerr's final record. All right. Nuke has plans on playing Sammy's final record at midnight on Halloween. That way people will be asleep while it's playing. It's the only copy in the world, so it makes sense to loan it to the kid who's known for tearing up shit in a nerd rage. And then he leaves Eddie with his, God, I'm gonna fuck that wig eyes. Eddie's friend looks like they wanted to give him a Skippy look, not realizing they hired Skippy himself as the lead. Eddie gets invited to a pool party so he can take a break from his heavy metal fan fiction. What could possibly go wrong here? Best case scenario, he falls into a barrel of acid and turns into Toxie. Oh, go figure, the bullies are there. Then how about getting the fuck out of here? I'm meeting someone. Who? Now, Tim may seem like an asshole, but we're gonna need his help as soon as Godzilla hits New York. Ah, uh, good. Someone who looks like Lori Laughlin, though her advice sounds nothing like what Aunt Becky would give. Yeah, I mean, why can't you act normal? I don't know what you're talking about. Wait, if you weren't so creepy, you would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, like her totally straight boyfriend who strips other classmates down naked in the locker room. By the way, can I just say how disappointed I am in Aquaman's new origin story? How did he not think this night would end up like this? I'm gonna nail every one of those bastards. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I'm gonna nail them. Yes, he's gonna track water all over their freshly cleaned carpets. Now's as good a time as any to listen to that new album. That's quite the meh face you're giving. On the other hand, the new Rammstein cut is excellent. He discovers that when you play it backwards, it says Paul isn't dead, but Mozart sure as fuck is. Anyway, I'm sure this school day will go much better. Hey, it's Aquaman. <laughs> I already made that fucking joke! Eddie gets his revenge, though, by starting a fucking prison riot. This had better not get slapsticky. <laughs> Can't pick on someone with a broken back now, can ya? They're running so fast, they don't even see the 35-year-old rummaging through someone's locker. Will Eddie get the best of these bullies? Die, eh, they're not gonna get in any trouble. That would affect their football scholarship. Eddie's friend, however, is a little unimpressed with the album. Well, I think it's your ordinary run-of-the-mill back mass message, just like he did on Fuck With Fire, Burning Metal, and uh, Torture's Too Kind. Are those albums, singles, or forgotten Herschel Gordon Lewis movies? Rest in peace. Now he's off to go tend to the corpses in his fridge, while we at home play 80s metalhead or hipster. Or let's just listen to that haunted record again. <laughs> The same thing happens when you play Judy's Turn to Cry by Leslie Gore in reverse. It's not that abnormal. The record tells him to go to shop class, so I'm assuming the record wants him to build an arc, and on that arc will be two of every kind of mullet. If you can get past the bullies, who by the way nailed their Bright Lights Big City audition. Oh no, this isn't Bright Lights Big City at all. He won the role as Giovanni Lombardo Radice in City of the Living Dead. Uh, he survives this one, and on the plus side, his perfect Billy Idol hair is still having a nice day for a white wedding. At this point, I don't even have the heart to tell him that his metal god was one of the solid gold dancers. Apparently, Mom has never seen her son before, as she's just now discovering what he wears and what music he listens to. It's every parent's nightmare. Her son is either Beavis or Butthead. Actually, it's worse. He's Stuart. So he decides to summon Sammy again. Oh, hey, it's his best song yet. Oh, look, he made Tim a mixtape. 
I sure hope it's got some Simply Red on there. And the creepiest person in the movie is still the bone and panty collector. Even with Eddie dressing like a reject from Griff Tannen's gang. Tim, meanwhile, is waiting for the Great Pumpkin to rise. And by Great Pumpkin, I mean his dick. But when he goes to take a piss, his girlfriend decides to listen to some music. Oh, well, at least it's not in mono. Something tells me Sammy may have been a bit of a date rapist. Her orgasm goes on so long, I wonder how long it takes for this guy to piss. <laughs> Plus, the remake of Christine is really stupid. The song melts her ears, which is a real bummer. He was totally gonna fuck those. Oh, now we get our second cameo in the movie, with Ozzy Osbourne playing an anti-rock and roll spokesman, in a universe where apparently Ozzy himself also exists. I don't even think it's a sense of humor. I think they're just out-and-out -out sick people. I mean, and they're trying to make everyone else around them who, who listen to their music as sick as they are. Huh, it's Ozzy's long-lost son, Crispin Glover Osborne. Do continue. Deep, deep, you'll beg for more. Raising hell and serpent score. Feel me, feel me. Now, what does that mean to you? To me, it means nothing but a sexual act. This is the clearest he has ever sounded. <laughs> Tim shows up at Eddie's house instead of going to the cops, but Eddie has his pumpkins perfectly trained. And you did something. You did something to that tape. I don't know what you did, but you're getting into some weird fucking shit, man. And I just want you to stay away from me, okay? All right? Bullshit! If you don't keep bullying him, how is he going to become the killer from Prom Night? Or Terror Train? Or Slaughter High? Well, you see where I'm going with this. The record tells him to kill him all, because it got bored of possessing the son of Sam's dog. We, we, we can't just, just go and... Nail them all. Nail them all. Fuck them. Well, that's getting a parental advisory sticker, and most certainly will not be sold at Walmart. Just wait until the internet is invented. I'm just saying, Eddie seems like the kind of guy who needs a conspiracy blog to pass the time. Better than continually playing this music. Turn that shit down. And the record is made even more evil through the power of Pepsi. Coke would have just made it sound like the latest Slayer album. Oh hey, good horror effects. Haven't seen that in a while. So, is this killer gonna actually appear in the movie? Holy shit, it's Lita Ford! This is like Nightmare on Elm Street if Freddy had a bitchin' scandal collection. Oh, we're not through Cameo City yet, I see. These evil people have just got to be stopped. Ah! Is it weird that if this were some kind of 700 Club anti-rock movie, it'd probably have the same script? Dude, what are you doing now? How are you going to sell all of this to a pawn shop 20 years later? Also, that is not your record, bro. Even Mom is upset by this. What have you done to your stereo? I wanted a new one. Well, too bad. You're getting a Nintendo for Christmas, just like everyone else. I've spent so much time comparing this kid to a serial killer, I didn't even realize he had a name. And apparently it's Roger. So Eddie wants Roger to steal the haunted cassette from Tim's car. He's smart enough to dress in all black, but dumb enough to do this in broad daylight. Not only did I not realize the character had a name, but it also just hit me that Roger is played by X-Files writer and producer Glenn Morgan in his only acting role. Eddie wanted Roger to destroy the tape, so of course he listens to it instead, and it blows out his speakers before he can get to his Goombay Dance Band album. The hell is going on here? He was a... Great, the movie's become so bored with itself, it's channel surfing. 
Sammy wants Roger to play the music at the school dance, or he's gonna keep killing off public access celebrities. It's Halloween proper, which explains why Eddie's mom is dressed like Steffi Love. And the movie finally has trick-or-treating in it, so I guess we can name the movie after that now. Eddie finds out the school dance is playing the Haunted Sammy album, so he races to the school, even though for some reason there's already another haunted cassette in his car, which magically changed it into Ash's car from Evil Dead. I know what's happening. The car is now haunted by the ghost of Hal Needham. And then he just leaves and abandons his car. Irresponsible. Now for a cameo from the movie's director, Groucho Martin Smith. But Sammy's ghost soon arrives to play a set. Oh shit, forgot the lyrics. Sammy feels like the natural progression of the Driller Killer from Slumber Party Massacre 2. Though I'm not exactly sure what's turned Sammy into a murderer, it's not really a revenge story. He just died in a fire, probably from being an idiot. Therefore, everyone must die, or simply listen to his music. My pal's name is Football. He always likes to roam. My pal's name is Football. Oh, God, it's worse than I thought it would be. Though I guess the soundtrack does have one fan. It's a trick or treat. See my face to the next time. And what we should need. Yeah, you call yourself a fan now, but this is one rocker who will kill you if you don't rock hard enough. Just like the time Sid Vicious shot and killed his audience with guitar lightning. Throughout all of this, the band just keeps on playing until he turns on them. This is just like Carrie, if her full name was Carrie Great White. Tim surprisingly hasn't been killed off yet, just in time to confess that yes, he is indeed Brian Adams. Is he gonna have a moment of redemption in the movie's final act? You are such an asshole! How is this guy still alive? Hell, Eddie actually tries saving him, but that's not gonna help. And then he was doomed to appear in 176 episodes of Desperate Housewives. Oh, the cops are finally here. Better late than really late. Roger tries killing him, but the movie's still got 20 minutes left, and I doubt that all of that is ending credits and mourning over Roger. He's dead. Actually, I'm not. Ugh, he's an actual Lee. Just leave him there. So even though everyone saw Sammy zapping people on stage, Eddie is still blamed for this, so he has to escape the cops. He tries calling up Nuke to warn him that Nuke is one eye away from being the worst film ever made. He's also trying to stop Nuke from playing the record on the air. Across the country, Dr. Chalice is also stopping stations from playing the Silver Shamrock commercial. Everyone dies this Halloween. Eh, whatever. It's not like he's gonna play the album backwards. In the true spirit of Halloween, the eve of the dead, we're gonna play this first cut backwards. Crank it up. What? Why? Possessed or not, why would you do that? And what the hell album is he playing? I thought Eddie destroyed the world's only copy. Oh good, now the police are chasing the real culprit. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was stopped by Officer Looney Tunes. But there are some fine chuckles to be had here, unironically. Jesus! Can't you just open the door? Give me a heart attack. <laughs> I'm giving points to this movie for giving a big fuck you to jump scares. And again, well, good horror effects. 
See, this is why I never trusted Quiet Riot. You can't have a riot and also be quiet. Suspicious. And don't even get me started on Motley Crue. That's not how you spell crew. Also, is he seriously getting killed by a toilet? Okay, so he's not dead. Or maybe he is, and this is mysteriously taking place in the Maximum Overdrive continuity. I sure hope Nuke is alright. Yeah. Whew, thank God we still have Vinny Vincent! Sammy has retired from performing and is instead directing the latest Gary Newman video. But Eddie has a big plan to finally finish off Sammy. How about that toilet, huh? You know, you looked a little flush back there. That's right, he's one-linering him to death. And he's taking him to jail for trashing a hotel room. Oh good, someone cleaned up the burning car so he can actually crash this time. Alright, so the water killed the electric man. This is one artist who is not rocking onto Electric Avenue. Now he's free to make out with his new girlfriend in front of a giant postcard. Wake up, sleepyheads. It's party time. Oh, and I guess he's a DJ now. What? One thing is definitely for sure, I am never listening to my Wasp albums again. Largely because I don't own any in the first place. Well, since this movie brought it up, what does happen when you play the movie backwards? Ah! Fuck that! I'm not falling asleep in the middle of a review again! Just play the movie regularly! The film only made about six million at the box office, but perhaps it made an extra profit by spending years in every five dollar DVD bin in the country with this ridiculously misleading box cover that makes it look like it stars Gene Simmons and Ozzy Osbourne. I prefer the original poster, which makes it look like it stars Stacy Jacks from Rock of Ages. Well, I was very disappointed in this film for over-spotlighting loud noise over the quiet dignity of a fine metropolitan opera. How am I supposed to sip on a glass of clinker brick wine when the soundtrack keeps breaking my glass? Perhaps someday we can get an opera horror film starring Ralph Malph. Naturally, we've got more Halloween-themed episodes to look forward to this month, but since we haven't done a fan poll in a while, subscribers to our Patreon page can vote on the next episode. And these spooktacular choices include the 2005 horror film Jack-O-Lantern, uh, evil lives in everything, like a Freddy pumpkin, yeah. What else we got here? Oh, we got the comedy Spaced Invaders. Sure, relive your disappointment. Alright, what's the uh, next Halloween movie we got? Uh, I think it might actually be empty. Uh, just uh, go ahead and pop up something for me. Uh, what? Uh, fucking Windy City? The hell does that have to do with Halloween? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! The goddamn pole is drunk again! Okay, fine. Those three choices. Have fun. Die, commie pig. <laughs>